Welcome to eighth grade. I'm Mr. Scott, and I'm here to tell you all about memoirs and to catch you up on what we have been doing in class this week. Hopefully you have a moment of resilience that you can stick through and bounce back and then write about it. Because maybe you're like me and you're like, oh, nothing's happened in my life. And then five years ago today, I went to the hospital and nearly died. That's the story I told on Monday. I'm going to go over a little bit of it to help you with all of those texts I've been getting about like, Mr. Scott, I don't know how to start. That's going to be covered today. I'm also going to be covering what we're doing with map testing because, oh my goodness, it's been a mess. All right, so let me share my screen and take you to where you need to go every day. All right, so again, this was Monday. We're talking all about narrative writing, the memoir, your story. We're going to go over exactly what a memoir is today. And then we're going to um, look at where you're going in the future with map testing. All right. So on Monday, we started our new um, literary warm-up devices. I will go over those shortly, probably near the end of this video. Um, we did a little wrap-up. I had a couple more people share their six-word memoirs. You guys are awesome. You've got some great work. Make sure they get turned in so that they can go in the grade book for you. And then I said, hey, here's my story. And I told you my story about... Um, nearly dying of necrotizing pneumonia. It's pretty uh, crazy that like I'm healthy and I was 31 at the time. I'm 36 now, so that's been five years. And I just nearly died. And it's really put a different perspective on my life. And so that's something I've been resilient through and bounced back from. And so I want you guys to think of something you've been resilient through and bounce back from. All right, so I'll go a little bit more in detail that in a little bit. All right, so that is what Monday looked like. Hopefully you are working hard on creating your own rough draft of your memoir. I'm gonna give you a couple things to help you with that today. And then yesterday, new literary, um, no new literary device yesterday, I went back and said, hey, here's, let's look at this, let's do um, illusion again and talked a little bit more about it, gave you guys a little bit more help. That was at eight o'clock. Hopefully you guys are tuning into our Zoom meeting. I, I think those of you who are, are doing a phenomenal job and you're getting your work done in a great way. And then I asked you, who are you and where is your story set? Expect a question on that on Friday. Kind of a closure for the week, thinking about where you are at in your story and what type of story you are telling. And then I had you guys think about watching this video. It could be a little meta if I was like, all right, I'm creating a video. I'm going to have you watch this video. I posted it to a couple of assignments. It's super cute. I want you to watch it. All right. So uh, make sure you click that link. I have it um, here in the daily assignment or daily um, ah, edit it out in our daily slides. And I also have it in Google Classroom under our assignments. I'll show you where in a second. This is today, no Zoom. That's why I'm making this video. And I'm talking about the plot. Again, I connected this little video. So click on it, watch it. It's cute. And then um, we do it. So I'm going to show you my written example in just a little bit. And then plot out your own story. And then creative writing time. So that's today and tomorrow. Um, so let's go back to, um, and then finally Friday, make sure how to start your memoir. You're going to kind of look at some of those final things. Think about where is it set? What event are you writing about? What was something that was, happened to your life that you had to bounce back from? Could be a loss in a basketball game. It could be um, breaking a leg. It could be something tragic like a puppy dying. Oh my gosh, my puppy died. I would just lose it. So it could be anything. It doesn't have to be super serious. It could be pretty funny. Like the time that you tripped and fell in front of the entire class and your underwear showed, how did you get back from that? All of these examples are probably things that have happened to some of us. And so I'm just giving you guys ideas. All right, so your rough draft must be rough. I'm not looking for perfection on Friday. I'm looking for ideas and that you tried to write. Actually, more than tried, you did write and it turned out a little rough because that's where I come in and help as the editor. All right, back to Google Classroom. All right, 
So you'll notice in your rough draft, I have added several things for you to look at. All right, so thing number one I want you to look at is memoirs, the power of vulnerability. This is huge, all right? Vulnerability and wholeheartedness, super important when you're sharing your memoir, all right? So I'm gonna go over this really quick. Vulnerability, is there a better, is it better to be vulnerable or safe? There are studies that show that being vulnerable is actually better for you than being safe. Um, if you're susceptible to physical or emotional attack or harm, um, I think it's better to be safe and yet you want to take risks because that's what moves your life forward. All right. So studies show that if you live without a sense of vulnerability, you're I'm sorry, studies show that if you live with a sense of vulnerability, your life is fuller. I think most of us want a rich, full life, all right? So vulnerability um, was studied by Brene Brown. She says, courage starts with showing up and letting ourselves be seen. I wanna challenge you guys to let yourselves be seen in this assignment, all right? Because true belonging only happens when we present our authentic and perfect selves to the world. Our sense of belonging can never be greater than our level of self-acceptance. All right, so we're all disconnected right now. We are sitting at our own homes and we are looking at computer screens for connection. If we're truly to connect, we take this risk. We be courageous. You guys are courageous kids. And you will start to belong when you take that risk and you are a little bit vulnerable with your story. So vulnerability is the birthplace of invention, creativity, and change. So if you want to be the awesome kid you are, take a little risk, share a little bit about yourself. Know that it would be awesome for me to know more about who you are. Vulnerability is the core of shame and fear and our struggle for worthiness. So I know a lot of us get this sense of like, well, I'm not even worth sharing about. Some bad things have happened to me, so therefore I'm bad. You are not your worst mistake. You are not the worst thing that has happened to you. It's sad that sometimes bad things happen to us, but you are not that. But it also, so it appears that it's also the birthplace of joy and of creativity and belonging and love because a lot of people they go that happened to you me too best friend all right so if you're not willing to share a little bit of that you might never connect with people so when we find the courage to share our experiences and the compassion to hear others tell their stories we force shame out of hiding and in the silence so we go okay i don't have to live in shame anymore that when i was um, in elementary school, I could hardly be who I wanted to be because of my migraines, all right? It was super shameful that I couldn't be athletic because every time I ran the mile, I'd throw up and kids would laugh at me. But now that I share it, other kids go, oh my gosh, I've been sick most of my life too. So if you live vulnerably, you live wholeheartedly and wholehearted living is worth it. Fully or completely sincere, enthusiastic and energetic, hearty, earnest, a wholehearted attempt to live connected to those around you. Doesn't that sound like a better way to live? Wholehearted living is not like trying to reach a destination. It's like walking toward a star in the sky. We never really know, or we never really arrive, but we certainly know that we're heading in the right direction. Don't you wanna be heading in the right direction, guys? This is where you can go with your story when you're wholehearted. We love, we cultivate love when we allow our most vulnerable and powerful selves to be deeply seen and known. Know that if you, um, if you take that risk and show who you really are, I'm going to love you in return. I'm going to respond with, oh my gosh, you are the coolest kid ever. So here are some guideposts. All right, authenticity, self-compassion, be kind to yourself. 
I'm constantly having to remind myself to be kind to myself. I have, I struggle with um, insomnia sometimes and it started about two years ago and in the middle of the night when I'm not sleeping, I have to go be gracious, be kind. This is okay. Which helps create a resilient spirit. Resiliency is again, bouncing back from that crappy thing that's happened, which then helps you be grateful and have joy which helps create trusting faith, letting go of that need for certainty, cultivates play and rest, creativity, calm and stillness, just that sense of belonging and knowing you're okay, cultivating a meaningful work because you've gone through something, you have a passion for something, which then leads to laughter and song and dance, which is where joy in life is from. So, when we share our stories of our own struggles, we become vulnerable, but we also allow people to read our stories to connect with us, which allows healing and learning. When we share our stories of our struggles, we become wholehearted. That is my challenge for you guys. That is why we do this assignment, all right? So I want you guys to go and read through this slide again and go, okay, maybe I can do this. Now here's how you get started in doing that. So first off, you're like, what's a memoir? All right, Mr. Scott's talking all about like sharing our deepest, darkest secrets. Not really what I'm looking for. I just want you to be real in what you write. I want you to be honest in what you write. That is vulnerability, all right? So memoir, a first person narrative, all right? It's all about you. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. I want you guys to be thinking of that. All right, I want you to go into these slides and watch these two because it goes over what a memoir is. Memoirs can be subjective. It's your version of the truth. So it's how it happened in your mind, all right? So that doesn't mean it has to be completely autobiographically, like date, time, location. It can be how you want to tell your story, all right? The first question on your mind probably is what is a memoir and probably like why is Mr. Scott making me do this but I hope I covered that in that last little bit. A memoir is an account of one's life and experiences rather than presenting an overview of the whole life. You're not doing the whole thing. You are just telling me a little snippet. You're saying here's what happened to me in the sixth grade when I was bullied or here's what happened to me five years ago when I woke up and couldn't breathe. All right. The story can be told chronologically, but events do not need to be recounted in the order in which they occurred. This is how you tell your story however you want to tell it. The story can be told through multiple media genres, such as film, podcast, or written word. Be creative. All right. A memoir is not an autobiography. You're not telling the entirety of your life. You're not saying, I was born on a cold, snowy night. No, unless that's the story, but I don't know how you'd remember all that because you're not a little baby, all right? A memoir is a short focused story about your author's life. So choose that slice of your life. I think that's why in sixth grade, it's called a slice of life story, something like that. All right, I love this. The writer of a memoir takes us back to a corner of his life or her life that was unusually vivid or intense by narrowing the lens. So that's like camera speak, all right? You're narrowing it so it only shows a little bit the writer achieves a focus that is possible in autobiography. Memoir is a window into a life. Memoir involves whittling away of the whole and going, I'm just going to talk about how I nearly died of pneumonia. There's so much more to me. I talk about this a lot, probably because it happened exactly five years ago. All right. So it's kind of on my mind right now, but there's so much more to me, but that's the idea of a memoir. You're whittling it down. And so now you're like, Okay, Mr. Scott, my next question is, how do you start your memoir? I've gotten so many texts about this. This is the big key, all right? You can ask an engaging question, all right? Eng engaging questions are questions that everyone should say yes to because you wanna get your readers to say yes, so therefore they keep reading. If you get a reader to say no, so if you're like, is your name John Smith? Well, everyone else is gonna go no, and then stop reading. Well, then you're not being a good communicator because you people stop reading your work and that's not what you want. 
So you want them to say yes, so you have to ask it in a way where people say yes. So you might say, does everyone out there have a name that they identify with? And gosh, probably 99% of the audience readers are gonna go, yeah, I have a name, and they're gonna keep reading. So here's my example. Have you ever tried holding your breath for a long time? This is a broad question. So again, broad instead of narrow, instead of saying, have you ever been so sick in the hospital that you couldn't breathe? I would be able to answer it that way and maybe one or two other people. Okay, you want more people, so you want broad. So you go, have you ever tried holding your breath for a long time? This is a broad question that everyone can say yes to because really, who hasn't been in a breath holding competition? Weirdos, that's who weirdos. Everyone's like, okay, I'm going through Eisenhower Tunnel hand on the roof. When I was with the basketball team last year and we were driving up through Eisenhower Tunnel, the entire team tried. When I was in high school and I went backpacking with a friend, the second grader tried and he thought he made it because he didn't know that breathing through his nose didn't count. All right, so onward. All right, really, who hasn't been in a breath holding competition? And so the reader answers with a yes. They are more likely to keep on reading. Now imagine you couldn't stop holding your breath that's what my life was like. Okay, so you've gotten your reader's hook. That's your start. Or you could start it off this way. You state a fact. Here's my example. A person's respiratory rate is the number of breaths you take per minute. The normal respira respiration rate for an adult is 12 to 20 breaths per minute. A respiration rate under 12 or over 25 breaths per minute while resting is considered abnormal. People love facts, so they hook, get hooked in by them. They're like, oh my gosh, I, I secretly, I hated school, but I love learning things. I'm like, oh my gosh, now I'm smarter. That's what you're doing there. All right, my breath rate was well under 12 and my oxygen rate was in the 50%. So when they tested my body, they're like, oh, you, you're not getting enough oxygen. And my face was like showing it. You can also use descriptive words and a metaphor or simile to help paint a picture in the reader's mind. My face was sky blue, that's a metaphor, all right? So obviously, you know, the sky blue one, my face, but it's helping people picture it. My face was sky blue and my chest was as tight as a drum. My chest was as tight as a drum is a simile. It's helping people go, oh, I know what a drum looks like, boom, 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 boom. Oh, okay, I can, I can picture what's going on here. As I tried to climb the narrow flight of stairs out of my parents' basement, Okay, so all of a sudden we know where this is going on and we kind of get an idea in our heads of what it looks like. You guys can do this too. But as my hands gripped the carpet, I wasn't sure I could pull myself up out of the dark basement. All right, as readers read this, they should be able to see a picture and feel what I was going through. That's what you're looking for too. So here are your must do's. Readers should know where your story is set. Setting is time and place. So that could be, it's October. It could be, it's September. It could be, it's 10 o'clock in the morning on a Friday, right? It should have a place. It could be the park. It could be the hospital. It could be like mine starts in my parents' basement. You should have a clear sense of what you were resilient through, all right? So that could be losing in a basketball game. It could be bouncing back from, nearly losing your left lung like I did. All right, so that's what I'm looking for with your rough draft. It should be rough, it should be fun. And 11 people shouldn't be done with this yet. You need to keep on keeping on. Now, I do know that some people work a little differently. What they call them, you have plotters and you have pantsers. Plotters need to go, okay, here's what's going to happen in my story, and they plot it out. They kind of use this little video, and they go, okay, I'm going to have this happen here, this happen here, this happen here. And then you have pantsers, and they're like, all right, I'm going to write by the seat of my pants. They just write, 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 and see what happens. I want you guys to try both. So this is the plotters, and this is the pantsers, Okay they're both gonna help you get a really good story written. All right, so with this, I'm gonna open this up to show you. It breaks it down step by step, okay? It helps you know 
what it what each thing is doing gives you a chance to like describe your characters static characters ones that don't change antagonist the bad guy um, your protagonist the good guy so it gives you a chance to kind of describe everything that's going on and then say here's what's going to happen in each section all right you don't have to like write your story out here but it's like for bullet points so that in each section you know what's going on all right that is due monday this is due right or no it's all they're both due monday so really spend some time on this all right lastly let's get up into here with our literary devices okay here's what i want you to do you're going to open the slides you're going to read the slides our examples are right here the words in red are going to connect to the definition all right and then you're going to go and answer the question in here. So for today, you had this slide, assonance. All right. So read the example. Father, father, unforgivable. This is my house. You made it personal. I'm not going to sing it, but gosh, listen to this album. It's freaking good. All right. Then, so it's from the song Familia. Um, why do you think a writer would use assonance? Again, assonance is the sound effect achieved by repeating vowel sounds, A, E, I, O, U, within words. So it's not on the outside of the word, it's inside the word. So then you go here and you answer the question. So 18 of you guys have answered it. And then you open up your digital notebook that you've already made a copy of from Monday and you put the definition of assonance inside there. All right, lastly, map testing because of the COVID cases at school we are not going to map test in person so the form i had you guys fill out you don't need to have instead we are going to start map testing next week there will be tons of information coming at you on friday if you have any questions please call or text not i mean text or email but you can call me too all right really care about you guys love you all thank you for watching this video